The new engines looked very smart. One was called Sir Handel, and the other Peter Sam. What a small shed, grunted Sir Handel. This won't do at all. We're much too smart for this old shack. I think it's nice, said Peter Sam. Huh, <laughs> replied Sir Handel. What's that rubbish? Shh, said Peter Sam. That's Scarlowy. He's famous. And he whispered to Scarlowy. I'm sorry, Scarlowy. Sir Handel's upset now, but he's quite nice, really. Scarlowy felt sorry for Peter Sam. Now, Sir Handel, said the fireman, I will get you ready for work. I'm tired. Let Peter Sam go. He'd love it. No, you're first. Sir Handel puffed away to fetch his coaches. He didn't like the look of them at all. Whatever next. Those aren't coaches, they're cattle trucks. Ooh! Screamed the coaches. What a horrid engine. It's not what I'm used to, blanks a handle. He rolled to the platform just as Gordon arrived. Hello, who are you? I'm Gordon. Who are you? I'm Sir Handel. I've heard of you. You're an express engine. So am I, but I'm used to smart coaches, not these cattle trucks. Do you have smart coaches? I see you do. We must have a chat. Sorry, I can't stop. We must keep time, you know. Gordon was speechless. Come along, come along, Sir Handel puffed. Cattle trucks, cattle trucks, grumbled the coaches. We'll pay him out, we'll pay him out. Presently they stopped at a station. The line curved here and began to climb. It was not very steep, but the day was misty and the rails were slippery. Hold back, whispered Agnes to Ruth. Hold back, whispered Ruth to Jemima. Hold back, whispered Jemima to Lucy. Hold back, whispered Lucy to Beatrice, and they giggled as Sir Handel started, and their couplings tightened. Come on, come on, he puffed as his wheels slipped on the greasy rails. Come on, come on, come on, come on. His wheels were spinning, but the coaches pulled him back, and the train stopped on the hill beyond the station. I can't do it, I can't do it, he grumbled. I'm used to sensible bogey coaches, not these bumpy cattle trucks. The guard came up. I think the coaches are up to something, he told the driver. So they decided to bring the train down again to a level piece of line to give Sir Handel a good start. The guard helped the fireman put sand on the rails, and Sir Handel made a tremendous effort. The coaches tried hard to drag him back, but he puffed and pulled so hard that they were soon over the top and away on their journey. The fat controller was severe with Sir Handel that night. You are a troublesome engine, he said. You are rude, conceited, and much too big for your wheels. Next time I shall punish you severely. Sir Handel was impressed and behaved well for several days. Then one morning he took the train to the top station. He was cross. It was Peter Sam's turn, but the fat controller had made him go instead. He was still cross when they reached the top station. Sir Handel was hoping for a rest, but his driver thought otherwise. We'll leave the coaches now and fetch some trucks from the quarry. Trucks! snorted Sir Handel. Trucks! I won't, so there! Sir Handel was about to cause a great deal of trouble. Told you, said Sir Handel. By the time the workmen came to rescue him, Sir Handel was feeling rather silly. To make matters worse, there stood the fat controller. His message to Sir Handel was brief and blunt. I shall talk to you later. 
Then he and the fireman left with Peter Sam. Sir Handel felt sillier still. Come on, said his driver, let's get you back on the rails. When Sir Handel crawled home, he found the fat controller waiting for him. You're a very naughty engine. I hope I can trust you to behave when you next come out of this shed. After hearing that, I'm sure Sir Handel will, aren't you?